what are the odds of the universe existing without a divine hand guiding it? And what are the odds that life appeared on earth and that mankind came into being without such a guiding hand? According to a creationist scientist called William Dembski, they are so incredibly small that none of it could have happened without the deity as the cause. In 1998, he wrote a book called The Design in France, Eliminating Chance Through Small Probabilities. His hypothesis is extremely popular among creationists. Here is William Lane Craig explaining it in his own words. The complex order in the universe. During the last 30 years or so, scientists have discovered that the existence of intelligent life depends upon a delicate and complex balance of initial conditions simply given in the Big Bang itself. We now know that life prohibiting universes are vastly more probable than any life permitting universe like ours. How much more probable? The answer is that the chances that the universe should be life permitting are so infinitesimal as to be incalculable and incomprehensible. For example, Stephen Hawking has estimated that if the rate of the universe's expansion had been smaller by even one part in a hundred thousand million million, the universe would have recollapsed into a hot fireball. Brandon Carter has calculated that the odds against the initial conditions being suitable for later star formation, without which planets could not exist, is one followed by a thousand billion billion zeros, at least. PCW Davies estimates that a change in the strength of gravity or of the weak force by only one part in 10 to the 100th power would have prevented a life-permitting universe. There are around 50 such quantities and constants present in the Big Bang which must be fine-tuned in this way if the universe is to permit life. So improbability is multiplied by improbability by improbability until our minds are reeling in incomprehensible numbers. Somebody please correct me if I got it wrong. But aren't Dembski and Craig saying that if the odds are billions of gazillions of bazillions against something happening on its own, then God must be the guiding force that made it happen in the first place. Let's see if I can find examples in everyday life that could prove them either right or wrong. Well, hello everybody. I am in a public park not far from my home and I'm going to perform an incredible experiment. As you can see, it is fall. It's not a leaf on the trees anymore. I guess I'm a liar. Here's a tree with some leaves left on it. But I'm going to do something special. I'm walking blindly without a purpose anywhere, etc. I just keep walking and now I will look down. And you are witnessing a miracle. Yes, there is a miracle right here. Take a look. I'll bring the camera closer. Closer and closer. I'll grab it. This leaf. There we go. See this leaf? It fell from one of those trees. Somewhere. One of those trees. And it fell. Or else it may have been blown off by the wind. And it found its way all the way exactly uh, well, I guess here somewhere. 
I've lost a spot. But it was there, I know. I know it was there because I picked it up there. And it, of all the places it could have landed, it had to pick that exact spot. What are the odds that it landed there and not there, 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 or in the lake? The lake is a lot bigger than that one little spot where I find, found it. How come? How did it land there? Look, look at this leaf. Like, and if it had been shaped differently, maybe it would have fallen somewhere else. And I would not have found it today. And maybe it fell somewhere else and the wind eventually blew it here. I don't know. But I know one thing for sure. It ended up right, well, somewhere there. And nowhere else. What are the odds of it landing at the exact same spot? The wind could have blown it absolutely anywhere. What, 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 the odds are incredible. The odds against it happening are enormous. Personally, I don't believe I found it there because the odds against that happening, yeah, it can't, it couldn't have happened. Oh, and I just thought of something. I'm gonna put it here. Can you see it? Now, what were the odds that some jerk would come sometime on November 21st, 2011, sometime after one o'clock, would find it where I did, look, pick it up, wave it around and put it back exactly at the spot I did, not where I found it in the first place, but at that spot. I put it at that spot there, you know, see here, that's where I put it. I could have put it there or there or there. Now, what are the odds, do you think? By leaf. A unique set of events set in motion days or weeks ago brought my leaf exactly where I found it this afternoon. The odds against it ending up at the exact spot where I found it are tremendous. We're talking of billions of gazillions of bazillions to one. And yet, it happened. God must have placed it there. But let's make it about me. I'm quite cute after all. Anyway, it all started back around the end of September or early October 1957. My parents were newlyweds, and they conceived me. I was born in June of the following year. But what were the odds that of the trillions of sperms my father produced in his lifetime, the right one would fertilize the right egg? I bet they are billions of gazillions of gazillions to one. No? But let's make things more interesting and go back 10 generations. We're talking about 7,678 people involved in a long chain that led up to little old me. Can you imagine all the right things that had to come into play for me to be born? What if a single one of those women had a headache on the wrong night? Bye-bye me! The chances of the right women meeting the right men and having sex at the right moment and the right sperm winning the race for thousands of times over a period of hundreds of years just boggles the mind. We're talking about billions upon billions of gazillions of bazillions to one. Everything had to be perfect. There was no room for the slightest deviation. And if we go back just one more generation, we're talking about 15,870 people. Adding an yet another generation involves another 16,384 individuals. Everything has to happen perfectly, like the most finely tuned machine you can imagine. And yet, I'm here in spite of everything 
since that kind of odds cannot happen without the helping hand of God, at least according to William Dembski and William Lane Craig, God made sure everything went perfectly so that I would be born. Isn't he or she nice? All that, just for me, makes me feel so special. I guess I am special. As cute as I may like to think I am, and my wife too, I hope, my chances of being born are 100%. Why? Because that particular tadpole race for life was run 54 years ago, and I won it. There was potential for a human life at that particular moment, and there were more than enough spermatozoa at the starting line to guarantee a winner. And the fact that I won is not that impressive, considering that women become pregnant all the time. The real odds were not billions of gazillions of bazillions to one that I was going to be born. They were millions of sperms to one egg that life was going to continue for yet another generation. You see, life doesn't care who's born, just that life itself continues. It doesn't care which gazelle is killed by the lion. All that matters is that enough gazelles survive and that the lion and its pride do not go hungry. What about the odds of life happening here on Earth, in this particular system of the Milky Way? Well, they may have been billions of gazillions of bazillions to one against happening here. But since there are billions of gazillions of bazillions of stars and galaxies, it was bound to happen somewhere. Not only that, the odds are that life is probably flourishing somewhere else, right now, as you listen to my voice. And what about our universe? How do we know there have not been billions of gazillions of bazillions of false starts and that our universe is the one that made it? We don't know. We may never know. But then again, we may discover the answer to that question one day if we look long and hard enough. Let us enjoy the universe we live in and soak in its beauty. Let's celebrate the fact that we are alive, that we have won the fight for survival in long enough to see yet another day. Let us make every moment count because we are lucky enough to be, to simply be. Let us bask in the fantastic pleasure of learning, of creating new things, of making ourselves better people. Forget complacency. Learn. Do something fruitful, if not for the sake of your children and grandchildren, then for your own sake, for the sake of the selfish pleasure gained when you feel good about yourself. I wonder where my leaf is right now.